Hi everyone, my name is Natalie Ledwell and this is The Inspiration Show. Today on the show, my very special guest uh, is going to be sharing a, a, his inspiring story, um, which, we, 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 which is quite the journey um, from, you know, all pro NFL player uh, to, uh, to mindfulness coach and, and yogi entrepreneur. So um, I'm going to be, he's going to be sharing his incredible journey and message with us. But before we get into the, uh, the, the crux of our interview today, I just want to remind you that if you are watching this interview on Facebook Live, or later on our um, YouTube channel. Don't forget to add that after the show is over, just click on the link below this video so you can take our 30 second quiz so we can figure out what's actually blocking you from success. So we can help you move past that in a more empowered way. So uh, without further ado, please let me introduce my special guest today, Mr. Keith Mitchell. How are you, Keith? Natalie, I'm fine. Thank you so much to see you again. Yes, exactly. It's great to see you. Yeah, cool. um, yeah, so uh, Keith and I actually had a really great chat the other day for our, um, our My Movies members of our SSA community. Um, and so we thought we'd also, you know, share here on the on the Inspiration Show as well. So uh, why don't we start like we traditionally do uh, with your story? Um, because it is, like I said, you've gone from pro NFL player to, to now, like, you know, doing something that seems so far removed from that kind of world. So uh, so what happened to get you from, from that career to what you're doing now? So I guess what where I started was basically my eighth season playing. I was in Jacksonville making a tackle. I played linebacker. So linebacker is the, the gladiator position. You call the plays. It's basically like the quarterback of the defense. So I'm making this tackle. And uh, I end up flat on my back, and, and I'm trying to get up uh, because the tackle is a big hit. And it's a good thing when you hit people in football. So you get up and celebrate. So in this moment, I'm trying to get up, and my body's not responding. And um, I go through a whole process of just laying on the field in this vulnerable space. This, uh, we call it Shavasana and yoga, but uh, in front of millions of people wa you know, watching and you know, couple, maybe 100,000 present, uh, I'm in this vulnerable space as a gladiator person. And, uh, and from that point on, my life has changed. I was diagnosed with a spinal contusion. I suffered paralysis for an extent of time there. Uh, and, and this is where I found meditation or conscious breathing as, as it was taught to me. Right. So conscious breathing, that's, that's a term I don't hear very often. How, how would you describe what does that look like? Well, it's the understanding of what happens when we breathe. And on the inhale, the diaphragm pushes down. On the exhale, it pushes up. So we take about 15,000 breaths a day. Uh, and each time we breathe on the inhale, diaphragm pushes down, massages the internal organs, that up and down motion. We have a chance with every breath we take to nurture and heal ourselves. And I believe that creates a compilation of intention. And so in everything that I do, I begin to have this intention of healing myself. And I always say, when I recognize that I can participate in my healing, then I'm no longer the victim. Uh, so it puts us in a more empowered state uh, to do some amazing things on the planet. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. I think that when we're blaming everything outside of ourselves or we're looking... We're looking for things outside of ourselves to heal us. You know, like if we're, if we're in a place of, you know, disease and we're like, you know, all we're doing is, is focusing on, well, my meds aren't working or, you know, this isn't working, then what we're doing is is adding that, like, the responsibility for our health is these things or these people or these events that are outside of us. And as soon as we do that, we lose all control to be able to do anything about it. So, you know, what I hear you saying is that if we, if we do these practices, like breathing and, and it, what you describe sounds a little bit like mindfulness as well. Is that the same thing or is, or is that something different? No, it's the same thing. It's all inclusive. It's to understand, you know, you know, we've been blessed. We have some brilliant minds on the planet and we've created some, some products that can, you know, add value to our health. But I think at the same time, we don't want to ever negate what we have inside of ourselves to do the immaculate because we're we're the we're the original we're the creation of of the the likeness of who we want to call you know the creator or god or so forth however you choose to to label that uh and we're we're immaculate ourselves and i think a lot of times we we miss that or and sometimes we even have been uh deterred from thinking that we have this and mm -hmm. so i believe this mindfulness of, uh, awareness is is to bring ourselves back to this 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 enlightenment or this light that we hold that we 
you know, allow it to in some cases go dim. Yeah. No, I totally agree. So, um, so you were able to heal yourself, um, and will you know go on a healing process um, from your back injury. So, uh, and well, obviously we, we we've heard about breathing and mindfulness. So, what other you know what other things that you do did you do to help yourself get to this point now? Well, nutrition became a huge factor for me. Um, and cleansing was something I was really got really thorough with because, you know, all the the, the bruises, the, the bumps and bruises that I sustained from from years, you know, twenty plus years of my whole life. I mean, there's a there's a quote I heard that uh, a professional footballer sweats more uh, in one year than an, an average person will sweat in a lifetime. Uh, so you actually leave it all on the field, and uh, you 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 walk away from the game depleted and not really ever knowing any other way of living. You've chose this role, you've, you've, you've committed to this role, and now you're like left because it, you can't you know, be in this role anymore. Uh, your life doesn't stop there. There's so many other things that you can do. And I, I guess uh, we've been an example of showing that. So a lot of things we go around talking about or teaching about for is this greatness within, I kind of show some of the things that we've been able to create in our communities and things that I believe that we have to create in our communities, you know, to solve our own problems, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, nutrition, mindfulness, um, and what kind of exercise? I mean, I know that you, are you, is your title, are you a yogi? Is that, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, yogi is interesting, you know, seeker of truth, uh, yoga meaning union, bringing it all together, mind, body connection. I, I, I could take those titles, but I'm not limited to those titles. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, but uh, but yoga seems to be one of these, you know, fancy pants, you know, late, latest kind of uh, exercise. You know, what is it that you like about it or what is it that in your style of teaching it that, that um, you know, makes it unique? Well, the yoga that I like to teach is uh, connectability because, again, you can't have compassion until you first show it for yourself. You can't have patience until you first establish it within yourself. And until I had the practice of, of of yoga, I didn't have patience with myself. I didn't have very much compassion with myself. And the relationship that I had built with myself, I had, my body didn't trust me. You know, I had always compromised it. I've always put it in harm's way. And so I came to a point now I want to re rehabilitate. Well, my body's looking at me like, say, what do you know? I don't know if I'm going to come, you know, easily with you. You got to court me. You got to show me that you really care and love me. So this is a dynamic that, again, we have to go with them to build this. And so through the practices I go into is, is listening to the body, moving with an intention, moving with the purpose of rehabilitating ourselves with the love and compassion and, and putting that program through our frequency and seeing what happens from there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I can imagine that from uh, your background as a, as a football player that, um, you know, when we're talking about, and I think we're talking about it, it it's not just nutrition and mindfulness and um, and uh, and exercise, but but it's a, a like a spiritual practice. Um, so I'm imagining from from that background that you bring a certain level of masculinity, you know, when it comes to spirituality. A lot of when we talk about these subjects, we're talking it about it. You know, a lot of women seem to be naturally attracted to this. But you know, what's your experience with the men that are also being a, attracted to these kind of practices as well? Well, it's so interesting. We have a program that we run with the military and. Um these guys, we went to Fort Bragg's in North Carolina, and you know these are like Delta Force and Green Berets. They're like, you're not gonna get me to meditate unless you jump out of a plane. We're gonna take 15,000 feet in the sky, and you're gonna jump out of the plane, and then we'll consider to meditate with you. Uh, you know, it's like one of those things. You know, by playing the game and doing that, you know, vigorous thing. It's like people. It's like uh, it's a credential, and people are like, okay, he took it on, then. I can consider it. And, and the cool thing about it is when they go through this experience, um, or it could even be the woman who's holding this masculine energy as well. When they go through the experience, uh, they allow themselves this, this time to kind of just put that, that, uh, that barrier on the shelf for a bit and just, and just relax and, and take that armor off, which is a great analogy, the armor, because really all it is is the show, you know, it's the front. 
you know, we all want to be loved. We all want affection and things like that. Uh, so in this yoga practice, we get a, this chance to really kind of allow ourselves these moments to feel, you know, and connect with that and, and put that in our consciousness. To, uh, and then also to be able to relate to others because you're feeling the next person next to you. So it's a, it's a dynamic that shows you that, yeah, you're this entity, but you're so much bigger and greater than you ever thought you were. So it is so amazing to see people come out of these little bubbles, these little shells of who they think they are to really step into this empowered space. And it, it, it just gives me chills. It gives me excitement to like to continue what we're doing. So uh, it's a great thing. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. I think that, um, you know, being vulnerable isn't the weakness that we, that we used to view it as. It, it takes a lot of courage to step into that. Um, and and by, by doing these kind of exercises and, and uh, practices, it really helps you to, to step into a place because, you know, yes, you're right. We, we do want the affection. We do want the love. But we, it has to start within with, with us, with ourselves first, you know, being that, you know, gentle with ourselves as well. So I can imagine that the military were a pretty tough crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that you've also uh, been to Washington mm -hmm. and did some work over there. Uh, were they just as tough? Like tell us a little bit about the work you were doing over there. <laughs> it's funny to say that. They may be tougher. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, they may be tougher. Uh, yeah, so we, we connected with uh, Congressman Tim Ryan, uh, Charles Rangel, uh, even Barbara Lee. Uh, she's a congresswoman out of California. We created the Congressional Yoga Association where we brought uh, staffers, uh, Senate, Congress, Republicans, Democrats, all together to do uh, a meditation and yoga class uh, before they go out to uh, do their voting and so forth. We kind of started that every quarter on the Hill. So really a fascinating thing that we could even create that to be in the presence of some of these uh, our decision makers, and, you know, to be connecting to them. And like Congress Ryan is a very thorough practitioner, uh, intense practitioner. Uh, and when I first met him, I couldn't believe I was on the phone with a congressman who was talking about meditation. It blew me away. So, uh, but it gets me excited because that's how uh, profound this practice is. And, and if we put our attention to uh, thinking and knowing that and believing that, well, we can be a yoga teacher, but we can affect so many parts of this society, so many areas of this world that in some cases we've never even uh, thought about. Yeah. And I know that you've also reached a, a big part of the community in LA with the Lighted Up Foundation. You know, and, and I know that you had a, a big event that we were talking about the other day. So, mm -hmm. so can you share that story? Because I, I love it how you went from, well, I don't really know anyone to this, you know, to this massive ga gathering that you were able to pull off. Yeah, like, you know, I experienced a, a retreat for the first time and, and being around people that, that I had just met uh, and, and seemed like in these two or three days I was with them, it's like they knew more about me than people who knew me my whole life. And I came back to LA because I had just moved here and I was like, I want to create this for the community. The world needs to see what this feels like. And I'm like, I'm putting this idea of the retreat. I'm like, okay, I want to have it at the Coliseum. I want to have 10,000 people come. And I realized I probably only knew 10. And I guess like what we talked about the other day is, you know, Alan Watts has this um, saying, uh, do you know how you will? An interesting thing about, do you know how you will? You would never know how you will. All you have to do is commit to the doing and then allow the universe to kind of support that. And that's what we did. And to make a long story short, we did that and we had 12,000 people uh, and we over exceeded that idea. And we had like three stages. We had children, we had a 5K run walk. We were teaching uh, people about sound bath healing, the acupuncture, massage therapy. Uh, we had the Clippers, we had the Galaxy come out. These are so the different sports teams come out and to support it. Uh, the, the, the mayor, uh, the city councilman, they helped us bust in like 5,000 kids on a Saturday and then take them home. I mean, it's just profound uh, what we've been able to create and, and continue here in L.A. So, uh, and this is, again, the excitement to, to put these practices in our youth's hands to say, hey, this is the idea for you to develop and grow so all the messes that we're making in the world you can come clean it up <laughs> <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> no i i'm totally on board you know we, we've actually created a, a curriculum for middle schools which is you know giving kids the the uh the tools and the skills to to set goals and to understand the power of their thoughts and their words and to have healthy practices 
that are really, you know, going to help them deal with the overwhelm um, and the stress that, you know, that no generation has had to, you know, the stresses that kids face today is more than any of the other generations before. So, yeah. So I, I'm just wondering, you know, uh, when you, there was back in time where there was that moment where you had the realisation that, that, that your football career was over. Um, could you ever have imagined that um, that you'd be getting to live this life now? I would have never thought in a million years. Um, every city I go to, I'm like, it's like an epiphany. Like in New York, I do a lot of work here, and I'm like, I'm coming here talking to people about compassion and patience. You know, a couple of years ago, I used to come here talking about hitting people and hitting them as hard as I could. Uh, the dynamic of that, the irony of that. Um, this is the best place I couldn't think of another place to be, to be able to connect to people all over the world and to give them something, share with them something about myself, share this vulnerability that can allow them to step into their empowered state. And I believe that we are the medicine for one another in this, in our community. We can do this anyway. And, and even as I share with other people, that's a continuous of my own healing. So I began to think that as we go out and we expand and grow, uh, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things. It's just, I believe this is what it's supposed to be like. I'm like, why couldn't I have skipped the football and come straight to this? <laughs> <laughs> I know, but surely you can see, um, so like things that from, you know, attributes and, and experiences thing that you picked up while playing football that has helped you become this person as well that contribute to this life. Yes, definitely. Uh, and, and really to be bold uh, and to, take the intention, I always replace the intention from football, it's like the playbook. So, you know, the idea of running the plays that I want to execute and trusting in the plays and, and um, realizing that this is my plan. So sometimes, sometimes I may get buried, sometimes I'll have success. Uh, and realizing that I can always work on myself to get better. I'm gonna make mistakes, I'm not gonna be perfect, but my intention is to, when I get knocked down, get back up and, um, you know, it's it's been a, an amazing journey, and what's to come? Yeah. Well, first of all, let me thank you for for the time that you spent with us today and the work that you're doing, because I know that you're making a massive difference, and and uh, appreciate that. So, if people wanted to connect with you, I know that you do workshops around the country as well. What's the best way for people to to connect with you? My website uh, is keithmitchell59.com. We, we pretty much put all the events there. Uh, social media, I'm really getting involved in the social media stuff. Uh, Instagram, keithmitchell59. Facebook, keithmitchell59. So yeah, check me out. Any questions you have, uh, shoot me a line. Uh, we have some, some really cool projects, books, uh, tours coming out. Uh, it's really exciting things. So I look forward to connecting to you. Uh, and don't be shy to come up and see me. And, and, or ask a question uh, if I'm in your area. So definitely. Wonderful. Well, yeah. thanks again, Keith. It's been an, uh, an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Nice mm -hmm. talking to you as well. So guys, thank you for joining us on the show today. Uh, remember that if you are watching this on Facebook Live or on our YouTube channel later, don't forget to click that uh, banner uh, or the link underneath the video so we can get you through that 30 second quiz so we can figure out what's blocking you from success. Uh, also click on the banner or the link here so you can go straight through to Keith's website so you can connect with him. And if you're watching the show on mindmovies.com, just leave your email so we can send you the Manifesting with the Masters video e-course for free. So until next time, remember to live large, choose courageously and love without limits. We'll see you soon.